Hey guys, this is part 3 of our introductory tutorial for Magic version 2. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2 yet, you should definitely do that first. The links are in the description. And as always, if you have any questions about anything in those videos or this one, please visit our forums. The link is also in the description. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the topic of linking, which is one of the most important topics in Magic. Linking is what allows you to achieve all kinds of audio reactive effects. And if you're using Magic's Performer Edition, linking is also how you control your visuals with MIDI and OSC. We'll focus on audio for now and get into MIDI and OSC in a later tutorial, but the concept is the same. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple modules as we've done in previous tutorials. I'm going to add a polygon module, which displays a basic shape, in this case a square, and then I'll insert a scale module. We've already learned that I can change the scale of the polygon by editing the scale module's parameters. I can click the arrows, drag with the mouse, or just type in a value. All of these result in fixed values which don't change over time, and you can see in the magic window that the scale of the polygon is not changing. Now you may have noticed that most module parameters have this little button on the right side, which is called the link button, and it has this little link icon in it. If you click the button, you'll get this panel open below, and you'll also notice that something new is happening in the magic window. You can see that the Y scale of the polygon is changing depending upon how I'm talking into the microphone. When I'm quieter, the scale is smaller, like this, and when I'm louder, the scale is larger. Ah! Uh... This is because I've now linked the parameter to the microphone source, specifically the volume of the microphone source, so when the volume is higher, the parameter value will be higher, and when the volume is lower, the parameter value will be lower. Magic always measures the volume between a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 1. So when I'm quiet, the Y scale will be closer to 0, as you can see here. And when I'm loud, the Y scale will be closer to 1. Uh... Okay, that was fun. Let's do another example. I'm going to unlink the Y parameter by clicking on the Link button again. And then I'm going to insert another module after the Scale module. The Translate module. The Translate module's job is to translate objects, which means to move them around. If you ever have any questions about how a module works, you can right-click on its name, here, which brings up the Module menu, and you can select the Help option at the bottom. If I drag the translate module's Y parameter, you can see that the polygon's position changes. But what I really want to do is link the Y parameter, so I'll click on the link button, and now you can see that the polygon is moving in the Y direction in response to my microphone. It's a fun little effect. Let's see how it looks with a sound file instead of the microphone. I'll go ahead and add my sound file, attach it to source 0, and press the play button. So that looked interesting, but it was a little chaotic. The movement was too fast, and I want to make it less crazy. How can I do this? Well, you may have noticed this little button here, with an equals sign on it, and if you click it, you get a list of functions they may look a bit mathematical, but don't be intimidated. These functions are called modifiers, and they let you modify the value coming from your source. Right now, I want to add the smooth modifier here, because it's going to smooth out the value and make it look a bit nicer. The amount of smoothness can be adjusted by editing this number here, and I can edit it just like I'd edit a module parameter, by clicking the arrows, dragging with the mouse, or just typing in a value. 
Now I'll press play so you can see how it looks. So hopefully you can see how that changed the result. If not, I'm going to press play again, and after a few seconds, I'm going to click this button here, and watch what happens. Okay, so what I've just clicked on is the modifier's bypass button, here, and it turns the modifier on and off, like this. Just like the module bypass button here turns the module on and off, like this. The modifier bypass button is a very useful function for seeing exactly how your modifier is changing the parameter value. Cool. Okay, so there's a long list of modifiers, as you can see here, and I do want to show you that you can add more than one modifier at a time. You can change their order simply by dragging them around, like this. By adding modifiers and changing their order, you can achieve really complex effects, and I encourage you to play around. We'll get into modifiers in much more detail in a later tutorial, but for now, if you want to learn more about how they work, you can right-click here on the name, and you get a menu which has some useful commands, including a help option at the bottom. If you want even more information, you can check out our official user's guide, which you can access here from the help menu, but I'll let you browse through it on your own time. I'm going to remove the modifiers I added by shift selecting them, like this, and then pressing the delete key. The next thing I want to do is talk about this feature box here. This feature box contains the ways in which magic can respond to audio. For example, what if you don't want your visuals to react to the overall volume, but just certain frequencies? You can select this option here, which contains five preset ranges going all the way from low bass to high treble. If you're looking to have magic respond only to the beat of your song, the bass ranges are a good place to start. You can see how that frequency range looked a little bit cleaner than the overall volume. If you want to adjust the frequency range to your own preference, you can click on the custom frequency option here and enter your values. I'll enter 20 to 320 because that covers the entire range of bass. That looks the best so far. But keep in mind, every song will use frequencies differently, so play around with the frequency ranges and see if you can get it to look nice with your beat. The last very quick thing I want to show is that when a parameter is linked, like this one. You can't edit it, which is indicated by the font being a blue color, here. But you can click on it to show or hide the panel below, like this. Similar to the minimize button we went over in the previous tutorial, here, it's just a way to save space if your work area is starting to get crowded. So that's it a very quick overview of how linking works and how you can get all kinds of nice audio reactive effects in Magic. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and in our next tutorial we'll be going over the concept of scenes, which is another very important concept. Until then, if you have any questions, remember to please visit our forums. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much.